is the paginator object and then this paginator object is the one that actually uh, gets all the data. So we have a huge problem here. Instead of the book output variables, we have a paginator object. Um, the problem is that we are not fully following the philosophy of no logic in the view script at this point. We ignored that because of the transparent way that the paginator works. What we want to do is to make sure that the view script receives only fully processed variables. So instead of the view script doing the paginator work, we are going to let the controller do the paginator work and then pass the ready book variable onto it. So if that doesn't make any sense, here's what we're going to do. We are going to replace this paginator with this books. And now over in the controller, we are going to, instead of the paginator, we are going to pass this view books. Okay. And here's how we're going to get the books variable. I'm going to make it an array because it holds all the books. And what we did in the view script we are going to do right here. Now, quite honestly, the only reason I have to do this is because this particular page that I chose to do the tutorial for is quite complicated because of the paginator. If you have something simpler, then you don't have to worry about all of this because chances are you already have the variables in a raw format um, in the view script. I'm only doing this because I have the paginator uh, unprocessed. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm creating a books array and then I am cycling through the paginator. It does all the database queries and gives me only the set of books that I need at the point and it puts each of those books into my overall books array and then I'm putting the books array into the view so that I have a clean um, set of variables. So I should not see any difference in my regular view. But I will see a difference in my Ajax request. Okay, now I have books in a JSON format being returned to the web browser. Um, now I still have this paginator variable, which I don't want. And the reason why it's there is because I cannot avoid uh, not passing a paginator variable over to the view because I need the paginator controls to be at the bottom. So I'm going to do this the old fashioned way and I'm going to check if it is not and if it is not an XML HTTP request. And this is the part that I was talking about earlier. Um, the most developers use this check to see if the layout should be disabled or enabled. I am using this instead to adjust some of the controllers events. So if it is not an XML request, then display the paginator. And of course, if it is an XML request, then this paginator is not going to be passed over to the view and I will not have the paginator object in my JSON. I will have just the books. So actually I could have just created a different controller but then I would have all of this duplicate code in it which is not a good programming practice. So instead I am making this uh, little adjustment here to the controller and you can just pick your preference. New controller or the adjustment. And like I said before, the only reason I have to do this is because of the complexity of the paginator. If you don't use the paginator, then chances are your controller 
provides identical data for both the XML and the regular request. So with that out of the way, uh, we have the Zen framework giving us the output in whatever format that we need, be it uh, XML or JSON. And now we're ready to modify the front end to make those requests. Now for this tutorial, the only thing I will do is I will add an extra link that is going to get us the books that we want. Uh, I'm not going to completely modify these controllers because that's uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial. The only thing I will do is show you how to use the Ajax link view helper to create background requests. Ajax link view helper is really powerful in a way it allows us to create the jQuery links. I'm going to create a link just after this one. Uh, I'll just call it test link just to show you uh, how it works. And for some unknown reason, it only works with a short opening tag. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. I'm probably missing something in my theory. Uh, if someone could please explain to me why the Ajax link only works with that kind of opening PHP tag. Okay, uh, so in the Ajax link takes a number of the parameters. Uh, first one is the links label. So I'll just call it test for now. And the second one is the URL. Um, for the Ajax request, you are most likely going to hit the same page. So the only thing that you need is the blank URL helper that's going to point to the same page. If not, you can always use the combination of module, then the module name, uh, and then the uh, controller, and then the controller name, and so on. In this case, I'm hitting the same controller I'm at now, so I do not need the module controller action combination. What I do want instead is the parameter, and that's the page I'm going to. Oh, and by the way, uh, all of these parameters, if you remember, have to be in array format. And here uh, goes the actual parameters for the jQuery link. Now you can find all the parameters available at the Ajax link manual. Uh, these are all the ones that are available. The one that you definitely want to set is the ID. Um, it doesn't say so in the manual, but uh, from my experiences, it creates a completely unpredictable set of classes and ID names that are going to put you into trouble. So I recommend to always make sure that you have the ID parameter set so that you don't have unpredictable uh, links all over the place. So I'm calling this one test, so I know exactly what it's going to do. I'll just format this a little bit. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to call a custom function at the end of the request. So what's happening is that remember how I'm getting the JSON variables from the controller. Well, I have to write a JavaScript function to be able to interpret all of this information and um, assign each variable to the correct place in the document. So I am going to do that in a function called display books. And to be able to call a function at the end of the request, I am putting in a parameter complete. So it's, in a, it's a callback executed when the object request is complete and you have a whole bunch to choose from you can call functions just before the request is sent and so on and so on uh, so I am putting in a parameter for complete so once the request is successful and I get some data from the server I am going to run a display 
books javascript function which I will create later and I will pass it all the data that is being received from the PHP